Hallelujah. May the glory of the God of heaven come upon you. May the testimony of the God of Jacob come to abide with you. Hallelujah. May the glory of God come as a tabernacle to be over your household, over your destiny. May the glory of God come into your home to visit you like that of Obed-Edom. E profrina hasta viniko uluba ai amona neke tesense. May the glory of the God of heaven visit you today. May everything that causes you shame become terminated in the name of Jesus. I mean every object that causes shame. May they become terminated by God's power in the name of Jesus. Welcome to a day of divine visitation. I see the Lord visiting someone today. I see divine turn around in the name of Jesus. Welcome to Moment of Encounter. Welcome to Bible study. I want to speak to us today about prayer. I call it the key to breakthrough. But today, I am not going to talk about prayer for you. I'm talking about you sowing the seed of prayer into other people's life. Because, you see, the Bible says it carries more blessing to give than to receive. That's what Apostle Paul said Jesus told him. It's more blessed when you give than when you receive. So I want to show you how that there is nobody watching me right now that cannot enter into this dimension of blessing. Which is the blessing of breakthrough that come by prayer. Everybody can pray. And if you can open up your heart to take up this assignment today, you will experience and encounter God in a way that is beyond human understanding. I'm, all, I'm going to start today's um, um, message by, let's look at the book of um, James. Let's look at the book of James chapter 5 verse 16. Yes, just that verse, just that one alone for now. Apostle James was speaking to the church. He said, confess your fault one to another. You see, the problem is that when someone confesses fault to another person in the church, instead for us to do the next thing, we begin to gossip them. The Bible says, look for someone that is mature in church. Confess to them your fault, your mistake, your frailties, the sin you are still battling with. And the Bible says, we should pray for one another. What are you supposed to pray about? You are supposed to pray about the fault that your brother, that your sister shared with you. Maybe they said they, they, they see a particular brother or sister in the act of adultery. Maybe they, they see them in a particular, maybe they are drunkards. Maybe they still smoke. Maybe they are still humanizing. And they are part of the church. They are in the choir. Maybe the choir master is the one sleeping with all the girls in the choir. When you hear those kind of news, if you want that news that you hear to become a channel of blessing for you, begin to pray for those people. Don't go and start, don't, don't go and start calling you and say, ah, do you know what our choir master is doing? Hey, oh my God. And then they'll be speaking in tongues. Can you imagine that there's a girl that has even that has even aborted for a choir master? That's not doing the work of God. You are doing the work of the devil. It is bad enough that the choir master is sleeping with choir member. You are now working with Satan to promote it in the church so that he can cause division. That's not right. When a particular brother or a particular sister find it in their heart to confide in you with their weakness. Your job is to pray for one another. Why? Why did the Holy Ghost say you should pray for one another? That you may be healed. Do you see that? So the, the ultimate goal of the Holy Spirit allow you to see the weakness of your pastor, your pastor's wife, that brother, that sister. It's not so that you can begin to gossip them and talk bad about them. It's not so that you can begin to look down on them. The reason why God allowed you to hear that news is so that you can pray for one another. And why did the Lord want you to pray? So that there may be healing. 
The Lord does not want his people to be cast to hell. God does not want to lose that fornicator that is already in the church. Maybe it's even a deacon or a deacon that is sleeping with another person's wife or husband. Believe me sincerely, no matter how bad it is, you have only one job. I have only one job, to pray for one another. Why? So that the person can be healed. And maybe you are telling yourself, hey, <laughs> Reverend, you see, me, I don't really know how to pray very well. The Bible says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. If you are a righteous man, if you have given your life to Jesus, the Bible says, your prayer availeth much. The New Living Translation says it this way. He said, confess your sin to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. He now said, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Do you see that if each of us as members of the church of God, if we take up this verse of scripture and we begin to practice it, more people will be born again. Many people that are backsliding will come back to the Lord like the prodigal son. Many pastors will stop sleeping with deaconess and church members. They will come back to the Lord. But when you now allow your flesh to begin to broadcast bad news about other Christians, you are spoiling the image of the child of God. You that are parents, let me ask you, if any of your child is doing something that is very, very bad, disgraceful, will you be happy? To hear your other son going to shout it to other friends. Come and see what my sister is doing. She's a disgrace. Will you be happy? Now, if you will not be happy, God is not happy. When you begin to broadcast the bad news about people, the Bible says, when you see it, when they confess to you, pray for them so that we all can be healed. Because the fervent prayer of a righteous person is very powerful and produces amazing result now today I, I just want us to I just want to encourage you to take up this ministry of prayer because when we each of us we take up this ministry of prayer the people of God will grow the church of God will grow nobody is perfect it's just that one person can be strong in a particular area while another person can be weak in that area when we learn to pray for each other we will all be healed and the church of God will be able to grow. Let me, let, let me show you something about what Apostle Paul said to the Galatian church. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 19. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 19, Apostle Paul, of course, when you read the book of Galatia, you will get the background story. The Galatian church are what we call the Orthodox Jews, but Apostle Paul preached to them and told them that they don't need physical circumcision to be accepted by God. That if, if they just accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that they will be saved. And they accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They were prayed for. They received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. But after some people that are Jews, when they saw that Galatia has received the gospel of salvation that Paul preached, they now came with their own gospel. The gospel of circumcision of the flesh. So, Apostle Paul is now telling them that, listen, were you born again because you circumcised your flesh? Did you receive the Holy Spirit because you do anything? It is by your faith in Christ. So, he now makes them to know what he's doing for them. When he sees all those weaknesses that are happening in the church, some people are now polluting them with wrong doctrine. What does Apostle Paul do? My little children, he said, of whom I travel in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Dickness. Dicky, pastor's wife. Pastor. Choir master. Usher. Listen. If we all, we take up the assignment of traveling in bath concerning other believers in the church, we are going to have less problem. We are going to have less break off 
of people leaving African churches to go to establish white, white churches. Because as I was talking to somebody earlier today, he, she, she made me know that there is too much chop, 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 chop in, in, in African churches. And I told her, the reason is because most African churches pastor, all we talk about is Satan, 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 and then we prophesy. We don't teach people the truth of how to live as a child of God. And that's part of the assignment God has given to me for the body of Christ right now that I'm in Houston. God has given me that assignment to help members of churches to know how to work with God. And the Lord is giving me the body to share with you what you can do to help the healing of your church. Don't leave that church. If the pastor is not, is not using satanic power, don't leave the church. It's only if you know that the man of God is using fetish power, live for your destiny's sake. But if it is just the sin, weaknesses, divisions and all that, don't leave the church. Take this thing up. Apostle Paul was talking about his praying for them. He likened the praying to travail. What is travail? Travail is the, 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 the pain a woman goes through when she's about to give birth. That's why he said, my little children, the Galatian church, you people, I still have to travail again. That means he has done it before, before they got born again. Now that they are born again and the enemy is not targeting them, I am traveling again until Christ be formed in you. And when you look at the book of Colossians chapter 4, Apostle Paul was talking about a particular brother in the church. Remember, I am encouraging you to begin to take up the ministry of prayer, praying for other people, praying for your pastor, praying for your pastor's wife, praying for that, those people that are divided in the church, that the Spirit of God will come between them and the problem will be resolved. P elders, pray that the church will be peaceful. Look at what Apostle Paul said concerning this guy, Epaphras. Who is one of you? He's talking to the Colossian church. Remember that Apostle Paul, all this thing we are writing, is just the writing of Apostle Paul to the churches. I'm sure that when Apostle Paul was being used by the Holy Ghost to write these letters, he did not know that in thousands of years later, you and I will still be benefiting from this um, scripture. But the Lord chooses to use his writings and canonize it as his spoken word because it was the Holy Ghost speaking through him. Ephaphras, who is one of you? A servant of Christ, salute you. Now look at the way he described Ephaphras. Always laboring fervently for you in prayers. Why? So that you may stand perfect. That word perfect means mature and complete in all the will of God. Why don't you take up this assignment? You may not be able to stand on the altar to preach. You may, you may not even have the grace to be able to talk to people. You may, not be able, you may not even have the grace to be able to give like some people we give in church. But everybody can pray. You can begin to take individual people, write their names down, and begin to pray every day. Every day. And, and, and you see, Apostle Paul said, I travel again until Christ be formed in you. Until, which means it's a continuous prayer. He's praying and he's watching them. And he's watching them. When he now sees that, okay, these people have now changed, he will stop the prayer for them. And this guy, Ephaphras, we are told that he is also laboring. To labor is like giving birth to baby. Laboring fervently for you in prayers. Until when? So that you can become mature and complete in the will of God. If every pastor of churches can be praying like this for their church member, the church will grow. We will have more healthy environment. But okay, pastor, no, 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 you are you be you be using your mouth as pastor to spoil another another member because this particular member maybe because he's good to you he give you money or because he's available to serve you you now begin to run down other people before that person that's why we have division in the church let's begin to pray god just asked me to tell you today we all can begin to enter into this level and remember I said it carries more blessing when you give than when you receive. So when you pray for people, you are going to have breakthrough in your own life. Because you will have joy. 
The Lord will be happy that you are one of those that have made yourself available to help other people. Listen, your job will not become like the job of a nurse that is helping to, to, to clean wound. You know wound is very, very disgusting. But some people take the assignment, they will remove all the dead skin, they will begin to clean it every time until the wound is healed. That is what prayer does. You can begin to pray so that there will be healing in the church. Remember the scripture I started with. Confess your fault, your sin to one another. Eh? Pray for one another. Why? So that you may be healed. The Lord wants his church to be healed. But the Lord cannot heal his church if you and I don't take up the responsibility of praying for the healing of those who need it. It's not only physical healing. Some people may need emotional healing. You just say that person is very touchy. You don't know what she has gone through in the churches where she's coming from. You don't know whether she has a relationship with the choir master or with one of the deacon who promised to marry her. After violating her sexually, the, the guy now went to go and marry another person. Maybe it's even a sister that has wounded a brother. So when the guy now changed church, it will be so touchy. It will be so it will be so... I, I don't know the idea to use. He will be picky. He will be suspecting everybody. Please, pray for him that he may be healed. Now, let's go to the book of First Kings chapter 18. I, want just, I just want us to see an example of what it means to travel in prayer. The Bible tells us that after Elijah has prayed, God told him in verse 1, Go and show yourself to Ahab. I will send rain. And after Elijah um, has told... Look at what he said. And Elijah said to Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. That's what God told him is going to happen. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. But Elijah went to the top of Mount Carmel, and he cast himself down to the earth, and put his face between his knees, and he began to pray. As he was praying, he said to his servant, Go up now and look towards the sea. You see what I was saying? He was praying and he was watching watch and pray and he said he said to the servant, go up now and look towards the sea and the servant went up and looked and said there is nothing and elijah said to him go again seven times verse 44 and it came to pass at the seventh time he said behold there arise a little cloud out of the sea like a little man's hand and elijah said to the servant oh yeah yeah go up say to him prepare your chariot chariot and get it down now that the rain does not stop you verse 45 the bible says and meanwhile it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heavens was black with the cloud and wind and there was a great rain and here rode and went to Jerusalem. now the important thing i want you to pick here is the fact that elijah was praying and he was asking his servant to go and be watching the sky watch and pray that's what it means to travel in prayer it's not a one-time prayer. It's a prayer that you'll be making. And you'll be observing and be, and be checking out that particular person, that particular family. You want to see their improvement. You want to see the progress. And if you have not seen progress, you keep praying. You don't get fed up. You keep praying. You keep praying. Sometimes it might take you a whole year. It might take you six months. It might take you three months. You see, this, this ministry is like when a woman gives birth to a child. The attention of that woman will be upon that child. Day and night, the mother will be watching how to, the child grows, how he eats. If he has any infection, they will, they will try to see how to give medication and all that. That's what I am calling you to come and do. That's what the Lord is asking me to tell you. That's the assignment he has given to each one of us. Let's learn to pray for one another don't castigate don't run down you are not gaining anything jesus is not gaining anything you say eh, i'm not going to go to any church all those churches they are not good blah 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 fine i don't know what you have gone through but believe me sincerely why don't you take up this ministry and start praying about those people that have wounded you that are not good and you'll be surprised there's no one the lord cannot change and when you see them change they may not know but you will have the satisfaction in your heart that you have seen the result of your prayer life on behalf of somebody. In the book of Luke chapter 18, I'll read that before I, I stop today. In Luke chapter 18, we have the story of um, a widow. 
And Jesus wanted us to know that there's nothing God will not do for us if we choose not to give up. And he spoke a parable to them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And he said to them from verse 2, he said, and there was in a particular city a judge which does not fear God, neither regard man. Verse 3, and there was a widow in that city, and she came to him repeatedly, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And the judge will not listen to her for a while. But afterwards, the judge said within himself, Though I don't fear God, and I don't regard men, but this woman widow continue to trouble me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming, she weary me. And Jesus said to the disciples, he said, look and hear what the unjust judge said. Verse 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry out to him day and night? Shall God not answer the prayer of his own children, that cry to him day and night? What I'm saying is, don't give up. If you have never seen result, continue. The Lord will never forsake you. Listen, God does not want the death of a sinner. He wants the sinner to repent and be saved. So there is no way you will pray for someone. Pray and talking to God that God will make that person's life better. There is no way that the Lord will not answer that prayer. It might take some time. It might take time. But don't give up. Especially if you can pray in tongues. Ah, Lobaton. Just begin to pray in the spirit. Allowing the Holy Ghost to help you in prayer for that particular woman, that particular sister, that particular brother that has been jilted. I remember when, early in my life, before I got married, the person God wanted me to marry. She said that she cannot marry me. I am not better than a, a counselor to her. She can never. She didn't see me being a husband to her. Ah, this thing pained me because I waited for her for seven years. After God finally told me to forget about her, it became difficult for me to be close to sisters again. I am a pastor, but I find it difficult to be able to get close to sisters because of what this lady did to me. It took God. So, when people are reserved, when they are withdrawn, when they don't talk, don't castigate them. You don't know what they've gone through. You don't know. But your prayer can, can activate the healing power of God to heal them so that they can become useful. I therefore take this time to pray for you, every one of you watching me right now. I pray that the grace of a mother will come upon us, including myself. The grace to take other people's body the Bible says that bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law. The grace to take other people's burden up in prayer. Receive in the name of Jesus. I receive, Father. The grace to be compassionate towards the weak. Receive in the name of Jesus. I receive, Father. The grace to build and not to tear down other people and the work of God. Receive that grace now. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that judgmental spirit inside you right now. That demonic force that always makes you to be the force to see problem in every solution. To see you are the one that always see evil in everything. I rebuke that spirit of judgment judgment in the name of Jesus. You say, man of God, do, 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 don't, don't you want to see what I see? Jesus said, do not judge so that you will not be judged. He said, you that is talking about the small speck in the eyes of somebody. Jesus said, when you remove the plank in your own eyes, in any way, your problem is bigger. Than when you remove plank from your own eyes, then you can clearly see the speck in other people's eyes. Because Jesus said, the way you judge others is the way you will be judged. If people are so judgmental of you, look back at how you also have lived your life to judge and ridicule other people. That's why you are reaping what you have sown. But I pray that the mercy of God will reach out to you today and that you will receive help from above. In the name of Jesus. 
If you need counseling, the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you, if you need counseling in this area of this message, you can call this number, 872-731-7263. You need counseling. Maybe you need me to pray with you. You need counseling to, to know how to be able to put this message to, 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 to practice. Call that number. I'll pick it. If I don't pick it, send me a message. I'll call you back as soon as possible. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to know that one of the things that God has granted me grace is to be able to teach the believers how to walk in the authority of Christ. And that's why you discover that majority of my messages are always power-oriented. And every man's word carry the anointing of God on his life. Whether they are written, now, like I said as I was teaching, Apostle Paul was writing those letters. He never knew that you and I are going to benefit from it. That is the power of writing. Now, I have this book, Satan, I'm in charge here. The Lord gave me and inspired me on this title because he wants some people who are constantly being defeated by satanic powers to understand the secret of how to defeat the enemy and keep him defeated. Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth you know shall make you free. With a gift of $20 or more, I'll send you this book anywhere in the United States by postal services, you know. And I'm trusting God that the grace of God on my life will work for you as you take advantage of that. And um, like I said before, every Tuesday, between 7 and 8 in our church auditorium, I always have prayer meeting with a group of people. You can choose to join us. You don't have to be a member of our church to come. You can just, okay, you know what? I love Reverend Sam's anointing. Every Tuesday by 7 p.m., I will always join them to pray. It's a one-hour prayer. Before 10, after 8, we are through. Between 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Join us. And I trust that in the name of Jesus, as we pray together, the grace and the glory of God that is upon my life that you see will come upon you gradually. Remember, when Jesus called Peter, James, and John and took them to the mountain of transfiguration, they saw his glory. Go and check their life thereafter. They are the ones that stood out among many. I trust that in the name of Jesus, as you take advantage of the glory that God has given to me, you will see excellence and breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad I'm able to come your way today. And I trust that God has used this telecast to be a blessing to you. All I'm going to encourage you is go and do likewise. Don't forget when Jesus was talking about the man that was beaten by thieves, the Levite, the priest, they didn't do anything. But the Samaritan took care of him, took him to the hospital and paid the bills. You can do that with your prayer. Don't, don't despise the wounded. Help them to get better. Because only God knows tomorrow what day will be. The madman of Gadara may be mad for many years, but after his deliverance, he became an evangelist for Jesus Christ. The Lord is helping. Once you to be responsible for the healing and the restoration of others. And I trust that in Jesus' name, you will do it and you will not disappoint God. Until I come again next time, don't you ever forget, no matter what you have gone through in life, I believe that now that you are hearing me, the testimony of your life shall become that you are wonderful because Jesus is real. i see you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye. Wow. I'm Reverend Sam Ajibade, and I want to take this time to specially invite you to be a part of our worship service any Sunday. You know, our church address is Grace Ministries International 11214, Plainfield Street by West Belfort, suit D77031. Listen to me. Everybody needs someone to talk to. In case you have need for counseling, just you can just call the number 872 731 7263. Listen to me. If you are looking for a place where you will encounter God and get insight in the world, I'll invite you to be a part of our church service every Sunday morning. God bless you. Until I see you. Bye-bye.